Okay, so immediately continuing on with the uh, question four, um, I want to look at uh, some limits here. That is the question C part. So this is a bunch of limits. None of them are really all that difficult. In fact, the one that I just did here as part of the ratio test is at least as difficult as everything I'm going to do. Um, and bizarrely enough, one of them actually has the answer written down. Uh, but let's uh, let's have a, a look at these here. Okay, so C part one, we want to know the limit as n goes to infinity, and the term I have here is three, and then I have n to the power one sixth. Okay, n to the power one sixth, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of 3, and of course n to the 1 sixth is the sixth root of n. Okay. Well, what happens on top here? Okay, what happens on top? Well, nothing happens on top, right? 3 doesn't care what n is. Okay. What happens to the sixth root of n as n goes to infinity? Okay. Well, think about it, okay? Let's just think about numbers and think about their sixth roots. Make it easier to think about their square roots, okay? So, um, we know that 4 has the square root of 2. We know that 9 has the square root of 3, that 16 has the square root of 4, 25 has square root 5, 36 has square root 6. So as numbers get larger, their square roots also get larger. Now the square roots get larger at a slower pace than the numbers themselves, but they do eventually get large, okay? So for example, I know with certainty that the square root of 10 million has to be bigger than the square root of 5 million, okay? Um, square roots get bigger as numbers get bigger, okay? Which means that as n goes to infinity, this term here on the bottom, okay, is going to get extraordinarily large, okay? Um, and as a result of this, I can conclude that this term on the bottom here is actually going towards infinity, okay? It's going towards infinity. Now, another way, of course, that I could do this is to divide top and bottom by the highest power of n. That's completely okay, okay? Um, but this is basically the same thing that I have here, so it is, there's really very little value in doing that here, okay, because the expression is so simple. Um, so we have 3, okay, over a number which keeps getting bigger, okay, 3 divided by a number which keeps getting bigger, and the bigger a number is, the smaller I get when I divide by that number. If I divide by 5, I end up with one number. If I divide by 50, I end up with a smaller number. You know this, okay? So that means that this number here, the total number, is going to 0, okay? Okay, since the numerator since the 6th root of n also goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. Okay, and the 3 doesn't give a damn. Okay, the 3 doesn't change at all. It does not depend on n in any way. Okay, now let's do the next one here. Okay, we have uh, part 2. We have the limit as n goes to infinity. And what do I have here? I have 4 plus I have 1 over n to the 0 0.1, and then we have minus 1 over 4 at the n. Okay, and let's look at our terms here. Uh, this might look a little bit funny because there's a decimal um, power and there's this 4 to the n, um, but this is really not so bad, okay? Um, why? Let me just change it into something that we might be more comfortable with. And here is going to infinity. We have the power, uh, the number four, that's fine. This is n to the power 0 0.1, which is the same as n to the power 1 tenth. Okay, 
n to the power of 1 tenth. And then I have minus 4 to the uh, 1 over 4 to the n. Okay. And now I'll clean that up just a little bit more. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. And now I have 4. I have plus 1 over the 10th root of n. And I have subtract minus 1 over 4 to the n. And now let's imagine what happens to these numbers as n gets really big. Okay? Well, in the same way that the 6th root of n gets big as n goes to infinity, the 10th root of n also gets really big as n goes to infinity. Okay? Which means that this one, 1 over the 10th root of n, that one has to go to 0. Okay? So the 4 doesn't care what happens. Okay? The 4 doesn't depend on n. But I have 1 over the 10th root of n, and as n gets big, the 10th root of n gets big as well. Okay? So that one's going to go to 0. Okay? Now I have 1 over 4 to the n. Let's see what happens to m 4 to the n. Well, uh, it starts off as 4. 4 to the 1 is 4. 4 squared is 16. 4 cubed is 64. Uh, 4 to the power 4, I believe, is 256. Um, yeah, 256. Uh, 1024 is 4 to the 5. Okay, so uh, this number here on the bottom is getting bigger. Okay, and the number on top does not care at all what happens to n. The number is 1. So this one is also going to 0. And I have an expression 4 plus 0 minus 0, which is equal to 0. So the limit is 4. Okay, and the next one is the only one that... Um, uh, has uh, a bit of computation to it. Now granted this one I have to make sure that I understand what all the terms mean but none of them are all of that uh, that tough to work with. This one on the other hand may be a little bit harder. This one is the limit. Again it's n going to infinity. Please make sure you put the, the subscript here for the limit. And now I have this expression. I have 7 n to the 6 minus 5n cubed minus 9. That's my numerator. What do I have for a denominator? I have 6n to the 6. I have 5n squared and plus 9n. Okay. And again, I cannot substitute in infinity. That doesn't make sense. I'm just going to end up with infinite number over infinite number. And that doesn't give me any reasonable insight into the problem. What I need to do is I need to notice that I can do the same thing on top um, and bottom. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is identify the highest power of n and the highest power of n. is n to the 6. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by the n to the 6. Okay. And now if I divide 7 n to the 6 by n to the 6, I just get 7. Okay. If I divide 5 n cubed by n to the 6, I'm going to get minus 5. And n cubed divided by n to the 6 is going to give me over n cubed. Okay. And then I'm just going to have 9 over n to the 6 like that. That's my numerator. Okay, and my denominator again is, is reasonably straightforward. I have 6n to the 6. I divide by the n to the 6. That just gives me a 6. Then I have 5n squared. I divide by n to the 6. So that gives me 5. And I need to divide by n to the 6. Two of them are here, so that leaves me and n to the 4 on the bottom, and then I have 9n, which I need to divide by n to the 6, so I end up with 9 over n to the 5. Okay, And now I need to ask myself, what happens as n goes to infinity? So what happens here is that the 7 doesn't change. The 7 doesn't care what n is anymore. Okay, But this one, 
5 over n cubed. Well, as n gets big, n cubed gets really big, okay? So um, this is going to be a number which gets bigger and bigger and bigger on the bottom while the top stays exactly the same, which means I'm dividing by a progressively higher number, which means the number gets smaller and eventually goes to 0. And the same here, okay? n to the 6 gets big even faster than n cubed. So this is also going to 0. And on the bottom, what do we have? We have the 6, which doesn't care about anything n does anymore. We have 5 over n to the 4, okay, as n to the 4 gets, uh, as n goes to infinity, n to the 4 gets really big. So this is 5 over something that is getting bigger. So that goes to 0. And then same here. This one also goes to 0. So the total is 7 over 6, which is my limiting value, okay? Um, and that is the entirety of uh, a question for answered. Now, it takes a little bit of practice. I'm not going to pretend it doesn't, but you have this video to refer to. You have that solution set to refer to. You have the notes and the videos that I did earlier. Um, you know, it, it's not that bad, okay? Um, certainly better than the thing we're leaving out, which is question three. Um, I don't think that's uh, something we can reasonably get done in, in this present circumstance. Okay, so that's, that's my uh, question three completed. In my next videos, I'm going to talk about matrices, and I'm going to try to get that content out as quickly as I can. Um, and hopefully I'll give you guys a solution set to uh, the question five from, from this one as well. Um, uh, of course, it'll be here on the uh, Moodle page anyway in a written solution, but I'd like to give you a video solution as well. Okay, so that's our uh, videos for today. Um, I hope you found it helpful. And of course, you can use the comment section to, you know, uh, ask questions or ask me to clarify something or whatever it is you might need me to do for you. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'm going to stop there for today. And uh, I will have videos up for you very soon.